All right. So, what's the ELO about here? Oh, yeah, I guess Aztecs do have siege engineers, don't they? So, if they go ARB. Well, well, but the thing is, is that I, I have Redemption Monks. I've upgraded my composition to include Redemption Monks with Byzantines. So, 1k ELO. All right. That's an unusual ELO. Most people are, like, under 1k or 1100, it feels like. It's funny. Well, you said you were a newer player, though, right? Newer to AoE? But did you come from StarCraft or something? This is Viking Rage. So we've got Japanese. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came from SC2 as well. But that was like four or five years ago. Uh, okay. Good, good. Yeah, so you understand that six on sheep is standard. So that's good. What you can do with Japanese is you can actually go mill first because you don't actually need the wood because their um, their buildings cost less. They cost 50 wood instead of 100. So you can actually go mill first to bring in berries first. It's just one of those things. I think that just going two on berries to start and then going to wood is actually better. Because, two, well, specifically two because then you can get maximum efficiency around the berries with two. Um, also, yeah, make sure when you're going more on wood that you put them on different sides. Like, two on this side, two on this side. You can go two lumber camps. Yeah, 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 exactly. You could even go two lumber camps right away. You can go two here and then, like, two here. And it's just going to be better efficiency overall because you don't need the wood right away. Four on wood means that you're going to be going for um, drush, usually. Okay, this is going to come in a bit late. But usually four on wood is drush. Oh, no, no, no. Just lead. Oh, you got to lead it down here, though. Okay, well, it happens. You'll get better at board luring as you get more experience. You can also go forward lumber camp. Well, th yeah, this is probably the worst spot for the lumber camp in your base. Th uh, maybe this spot might have been worse because it, it's a bit more forward. But the back wood line is kind of nice. At least the second wood line should maybe go here because then you can get a TC on this wood line. Basically, you want to take back wood lines with the uh, lumber camp and then you want TCs to sort of cover the sides. So, TC here. It's kind of tough because you have forward main gold. But you're going to have to secure the main some, um, somehow. Because your other golds are, well, not so good either. Otherwise, you're going to have to wall all the way from here to here. You could take back gold to start back here. But this gold is a little bit closer. So, it's still probably fine. You just want to have military here. But you see how we're floating a lot of wood here? It's because you went four on wood and you didn't need to, especially with Japanese. So, it would have been much better to just go to berries before wood, and then you wouldn't have all this extra resources. Because, basically, resources in the bank is useless. Like, obviously, you'd, be, you'd rather have resources than not have resources, but you'd rather in, have the resources on the map in buildings or military instead of sitting in the stockpile. That was unfortunate. It happens. Straight into the TC. Um, you saw gold and stone here, though. So, eventually you'll be able to pay attention to your scout. But when you see stuff like this, always make sure that it's a 4-tile or a 3-tile. Because the neutral golds, like this one, it's a 3-tile. So, if you see 3-tile, that means the enemy is not there. If you see a 4-tile, the enemy is here. Or a 5-tile um, stones. Because the stones spawn in 2-tiles. Uh, like this one. So, two, two tile stones and three tile golds are neutrals. If you see those, he's not there. Whereas, four tile and seven tile golds, those are that's the main gold. We've got the two secondary golds. And then, a five tile and a four tile stone. So, you can sort of see these little things. And then, you know you're getting close to the enemy's base. That's on Arabia. Every map is different, but Arabia is the standard, so... Yeah. Ooh, this mining camp, you're kind of laming yourself with the house. Basically, if he attacks you and you have to run, your vills are going to be going all over the place. Uh, I probably would have put it here. You can put it touching, but I would have put it here. Because then you have good efficiency here. You can put, like, one in there. Uh, maybe one here. Maybe one here. It's, it's an ugly gold. Honestly, I think optimally you would have put it here. And then you would have had the four tiles just to take from. But now... 
It's not quite as good. Also, if you're going to have just two on this, you want to put one on the other side. Because watch. Watch what this guy does. He's going to walk all the way around like that. Whereas if he's on this side, he doesn't have to walk. And over time, it actually adds up. You will collect a lot more gold if you put them on different sides. And it's the same thing with berries. It's the same thing with wood. Just make sure that you have your villagers distributed evenly on both sides of the camp. Um, but yeah, with Japanese specifically, don't be worried about getting extra camps. Their camps are super cheap. So for efficiency's sake, you definitely want to have... You could have three lumber camps right now and be fine. Okay, what are we doing with these? There we go. Okay, good. Good second lumber. Um, but yeah, see, you're floating so much wood. So you're getting farms now because you just have way too much wood. Um, you know what you can do? These deer are fairly close. You can long distance mine all of these, or sorry, long distance hunt these deer with four. Um, you want to go four because four is the number of villagers that will actually fully harvest the deer and then come back. Whereas if you go three, they'll leave like 10 food on it and then your villagers will go out, harvest the 10 food and then make another trip. So it's really bad. Yeah, yeah, as Japanese, you can mill this. But as any other Civ, it would be fine to just long distance these. And even with Japanese, it's not bad to long distance. Um, you're floating a lot of wood still. Basically, I even have an emote for this. But spending your wood is sort of the secret to actually macroing in this game. Because you're always going to be floating wood. And yeah, just spending it is how you macro. Or at least the... Uh, the main point that you have to get. So, yeah, Japanese men at arms are great. You can even go four Japanese men at arms, and then they're really scary. Oh, he failed the quick walls. Okay, you're gonna get one kill here. What your opponent should do here is delete, well, delete these and go out this side. But if he was fully trapped, he would delete the lumber camp. Oh, yeah, yeah, you might get her. Maybe. Oh, oh. Nah. He should have garrisoned. Wait, he doesn't have anything under his CC, so he can't even garrison. Wow. I don't know. Get her. Well, ah, whatever. Um, watch as this fight is unfolding. You're probably going to be floating a lot. You're going to get house here again. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where you're not really focused on it. Okay, this many men-at-arms is too much, though. Usually for men-at-arms, you just want to open with three or four and then go into archers. That's going to be the most natural thing to do because... Men at arms really start to drop off. Once your opponent can get archers out, then it's pretty easy to defend. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter if you have 20 men at arms. If he has like a group of five archers, he will just take them. So it's kind of like it kind of hurts you because they cost a lot of food. And what you need your food for at this point is going up to castle age eventually. This is working for you. Just he's losing way too many vills because he's not reacting properly. But yeah, there's the range. So. Anyways, your opponent should have quick-walled. Like, at my level, these men-at-arms probably don't even get one villager kill. But they've actually worked really well for you. Um, we got a bit of idle TC, though. Your macro's been decent, but a little bit of idle TC. Um, and it's because you have too many men-at-arms queued in the barracks. So, you, you have to cancel it. You know what you can do? You can actually hold control and then click. And it'll, it'll cancel one from the queue if you click up here. So, a nice little handy thing. Then you don't have to go to, back to the barracks. Or you can just hit your barracks hotkey and then go from there. Um, but look, we're floating a lot of wood. Yeah, yeah, blacksmith upgrades are kind of too expensive. Especially scale mail. I think forging would have been better. Because then at least you're damaging buildings more. And, um, and villagers more. Like, the only thing scale mail does is let you tank the TC a little bit more. And then also tank villager. Like, scale mail men at arms will not die to villagers, but he's just going to run his vills. So, anyways. We're getting a barracks forward. This is some kind of crazy masterpiece. Is it possible to cancel more than one unit? Yeah, if you hold shift, then you cancel five at a time. Otherwise, you just have to... Um, yeah, like, if you hold shift, it'll cancel five at a time. So, the maximum number you can have in a queue is 15, so... You know, you just do that a couple times, and it will work. So, yeah, he has archers now. And he needs to get fletching. Once he has fletching archers out. Okay, nice nice reaction. Going for skirmishers here is really good. The forward buildings, you can see the Starcraft. 
Um, forward buildings in AoE, I mean, it's good. But it can leave your base really exposed. Because imagine he attacks you with the archers, and then you have to bring skirmishers home from the middle of the map instead of have the archery range at home. It's a bit of a risk. So, anyways. Oh, let's go Alt-G so that it matches the color on the UI here. Okay. Nice, nice. He's... Yeah, your opponent's... Well, he's only three bills behind now. See, it's because you're idling your TC. Because you're building all these food units. Why buildings forward if you have pylons? Yeah, exactly. You can just warp. Warp in those dragoons. More men at arms. Yeah, yeah. Men at arms, they really start to drop off. Like, they're not really useful at this point. We're getting a market because your eco is a bit imbalanced. Uh, wait, do we have. We don't. Oh, okay. We got horse collar now. Okay. Actually, are we missing. Let me just check the eco text. Good. Double bit. We got horse collar. Good, good, good. So far, so good. Yeah. See, the men-at-arms really stopped doing anything. And, okay, you're still three vills ahead, so... You're still in a good spot, but here are the archers! And wouldn't you have rather had the skirmishers at home to defend? Yes. So, that's kind of predictable. That's pretty much what always happens is... You get the range forward, but then he sends archers to your base, and you have to bring the skirms back anyways. So, forward buildings are great when you're actually attacking. Like, if you went for the range earlier, and you attacked with the skirmishers and men-at-arms, then he would have to be in his base. But you kind of lost the men-at-arms, and then he was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to your base now. And you just blocked this villain with that, so she's going to die. Getting another range at home, yeah. Sometimes that's all you can do. Uh, yeah, I changed the colors so that they would match the overlay a little bit better. Because it was showing blue, to, like, basically if I go like this. Oh wait, now it's working. Okay, anyways, we'll keep it on blue and red then. Okay, well, whatever. So, skirmishers have three pierce armor. Archers, well, he should have fletching, but archers will be doing four plus one, so five damage. So he'll be doing two damage to you. Once you get armor, then he'll just do one damage. Armor for skirmishers is actually really big. But, well, if he doesn't go for fletching, then it doesn't matter, but he really should. Basically, when you're the archer player, you should not go real. You should not go forward until you have fletching. Otherwise, you're not going to get as much damage done. And, yeah, you're just going to kind of throw your archers a lot of time. So he's going scouts now. You're having a really big problem keeping villagers pumping. See, this is the thing. This is why one of the reasons why people don't go men at arms or extended men at arms in feudal age is because it costs food and you need the food for um for villagers at this point that's the most important thing i think he just brought two of your sheep home so you must have forgotten some sheep but taking these deer is really good um you're floating a bunch of wood again i would just get all of these build a mill here and just take the deer because you're not really using the wood right now like i, I bet you're selling it Oh no, you're not even selling it. So you haven't even used the market. You build a market, but you didn't use it yet. Yeah, it's one, 1,000 ELO. So, still learning the game, basically, at this stage. Oh, you can snipe farms. Basically, when you place a farm, it has one HP. And it's vulnerable to getting sniped by anything. So that Skirm could have sniped that farm. And it would have been minus 60 wood for him. But, just one of those things to look out for. But yeah, see, men at arms. I mean, men at arms are, will actually kill the scouts. Especially Japanese men at arms. He should not fight this with scouts. Yeah, he's running, kind of. Oh, you're gonna get a vill. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, the TC is really strong in this game. <laughs> so, you can't really do anything once. Once he small walls all of his resources, you can't really do anything with men at arms. Or at least other units will do the same thing better. There we go. <laughs> Sniped her. That's good. Cost you a guy, though. Um, okay. Stable. Okay. Yeah, you really need to get more farms. You've been on 10 farms forever. 
Well, you have 11 farms, actually, but you sent a bill away. So... Like, you should be up in castle. Both of you should be in castle. Actually, he's he's queued up behind two bills. So... He's delaying himself just because he has bills in the queue. But anyways... You're actually going to take out build. This is one thing that men-at-arms do better than everything else in Feudal Age, is taking out buildings. So you actually can take this out. But the thing is, if he had just archers behind here, he could just kill you. Okay, well, here's the castle I click from him. We're still floating all this. Like, look, you could have 12 more farms with th this wood, and 12 more farms will allow you to get up. Whereas floating wood does nothing for you right now. All you can do with the wood is just sell it and then buy food. Uh, whereas you'd rather build farms and convert that wood into food. Because the wood is basically just there for the buildings, and then you're not really using it for military. Like, yeah, skirms cost 35 food e or wood each, but it's not all that much. It has to go into farms here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't realize the wood. That's the thing. That's why I always stress spending wood, because it's one of those things that you don't really think about. But once you start actively thinking about spending your wood always... You will improve really quickly. And basically, once you're done adding the ranges, adding the blacksmith, wherever your blacksmith is, blacksmith, you even have market, like you have all the buildings that you need. The only thing that you can really spend your wood on is farms. And yeah, that needs to happen. <laughs> Usually, you want to make 14 to 20 farms ASAP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The build order, these days, if you're going for any kind of attack in Feudal Age, the build order just kind of stops being relevant um, once you start making military. Basically, the build order is to get you to that first part of getting the first few units out, and then it kind of, you have to adapt from there. Um, yeah. But the fact that you're up so late is going to kill you. <laughs> Like how many how many men at arms do we have? We have six men at arms, so that's three hundred and sixty food. You kind of threw you basically threw castle age worth of men at arms under the TC and did nothing with it. So you could have been up, but we've got all these units that aren't really doing a ton. And then knights come out and knights can't kill all. You're doing one damage with the skirms. The men at arms will only do four damage per hit, which not that good. Khmer have really good farmers, because Khmer don't actually have to drop off anywhere, so their farms are super, super efficient. Once he gets, like, probably six knights, then he should engage. But he, he there's no reason for him to engage, because you're not even putting any pressure on him. Like, if, if you were attacking his stable here, that's probably the best thing that you could have done here. Instead of hang out here, go to his stable. Ah, see, you're over-investing into Feudal Age. Knights just overpower pretty much all Feudal Age units. Thirteen farms, then wheel. Yeah, that's good advice as well. That's about the time to get it. I like getting Wheelbarrow before clicking up the Castle Age. I think that having Wheelbarrow on the way up is just almost always worth it. Unless you want to go up super quickly. Okay. He's just going to beat you with mobility now. And you have nothing at home. You know what you can do here is build spears. Spearmen instead of men-at-arms. Because especially Japanese spearmen, they will actually be able to fight this. Um, yeah, there's still a hole. Japanese spearmen are... It's, it's kind of the best unit in Feudal Age, if you have access to it. Cavalry archers are going to do nothing here. Cav archers are already not that good against knights. They're okay once you get enough of them, but... And then Japanese, well... Let's look at the tech tree. I mean, they have full upgrades on them. But... Yeah, you'd kind of rather not. Why'd I start playing AoE and continue over SC2? Uh, SC2 kind of got stale. Like, it felt like the same thing every game. Whereas, the depth of strategy is more in AoE. Because of the random map generation. And and the fact that all the civs are fairly similar. So, you can play different civs and 
still have some success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to click up the Castle Age. You can't fight this with Feudal Age units. It just doesn't work. Well, maybe if you built up probably seven spears, you could fight this. But the thing with knights is that they're mobile. So they can just run away. There's no reason for him to ever fight your spears. But the best target for you would probably be this stable. So that he, can, he can't build units. But I bet he has TCs up. Or he should. Your opponent should have TCs as well, but he's not. This tower... Yeah, I don't know. This tower means that you're not going to be able to get TCs when you go up to, to Castle Age. And now he's found your wood. I think you're just kind of dead now. Because you're so far away. And you'll... Ah, uh, yeah. See, this is just because you're... You don't really know. But you'll never be able to take the TC unless you have, like, 40 men-at-arms. He will never lose this, because he can just repair if it gets low enough. Uh, you're actually doing so much damage to it, but this is not useful. It, running past and going for the juicy vills would have been much better, but yeah. Well, lesson learned. Don't go after the TC in Feudal Age. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, we're going to speed through it. I think we've learned all we can here. Just uh, watch your last dying breaths here. Yeah, GG. You see it. Uh, yeah, well, I think you learned something this game. Especially with the replay analysis. Nice. See, there's no toxicity in the chat, too. This is good. Well played. You had good pressure early on. Not having the range at home made him so that he was able to do a lot of damage with those archers. And then not going up fast enough. But the biggest thing that you need to work on is getting those farms up. And being able to get to Castle Age. So there we go. Can you try to kill a TC with Feudal Army next game? <laughs> I think Saracens are the only ones that could even consider that. Yeah, look, the eco is way ahead, but technology will win out eventually.